Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome, learners. My name is Stephen Kariongi, and today we continue with our topic of discussion in biology from four, and this is genetics. Uh, last uh, lesson, we discussed the two types of variations, and we stated that there are discontinuous variations and continuous variations. So today, I would like us to get into details about those two types of variations. So number one, we'll start with discontinuous variations. And uh, we say that these are the variations that have no intermediates. These are variations that do not have intermediates. For example, uh, when you talk of something like sex, is either one is male or female under normal circumstances. And there is no other sex that is in between there. So we don't have an intermediate there. Another example, uh, we have uh, some people who have the ability to roll the tongue into a V-shape like that. So we are saying that those who can roll their tongue, we refer to them as tongue rollers. They have the gene that enables them to roll their tongue. But we have others who cannot. They absolutely cannot roll the tongue. So possibly you can test yourself whether you are one of the tongue rollers or a non-tongue roller. That is a discontinuous variation. It's because you are either on this side or on, on the other side, but not somewhere in the middle. That's why you're saying that there are no intermediates. Uh, something like blood groups. It's either your blood group this, A for, exa for example, B, A, B, or O. So there are no intermediates there, but you have either a specific blood group. Uh, for example, also uh, the earlobe. There are those people who have a free earlobe that is detached from the body. And there are those who have an earlobe that is attached. They have those that have a free and there are those who have an attached earlobe. So that way you cannot do much about it. It's either you have a free earlobe or you have an attached earlobe. So all those examples I've given you are uh, examples of discontinuous variations. And we are saying that uh, these are variations with no intermediate forms. There are no intermediate forms. It means that one either has a particular trait or a particular characteristic or not. E.g., we can talk of sex is either male or female. We can talk of ABO blood groups. You can either have one of those, but no intermediates there. You can talk of uh, uh, tongue rolling, the ability to roll the tongue, it's either you can do it or you cannot. Uh, the earlobe is either attached, that is attached, or it's free. So those are examples of discontinuous variations. So they have no intermediates, no in-between traits, but it's either you are on that side or on the other side. Now, uh, these discontinuous variations, they are determined by very few genes. They are determined by few major genes and are not influenced 
by the environment. They are not influenced by the environment. So that means that they are purely genetic. They are purely genetic. The environment has no effect on your sex. Whether you go to which country or which country, your sex remains either male, if you are male, or female, if you are female. Your blood group will not change. If you had blood group B, it remains B, irrespective of where you go. If you are able to roll the tongue, then you are a tongue roller. You cannot be the other way. So all those are examples of discontinuous variations and we are saying that they are determined by few. They are not determined by many genes, but by just a few major genes. And also the environment has no role to play here. There is nothing that you acquire. Everything here is something that you are born with. Uh, let's discuss the second type of variations. And these are the continuous variations. Continuous variations. <coughs> uh, these ones are those variations... with many intermediates between them. They have very many intermediates. For example, if you take something like the height, the height we have very tall people, we have moderately tall people, tall people, slightly tall people, moderately short people, uh, short people. So we are saying that there are so many intermediates. It's like a staircase. Wherever you go, you'll find people. Mm. In fact, on this, if you do, uh, for example, an experiment uh, with learners in a certain class and you take their heights, you may find that it's very difficult to get two learners who have the same height. They will differ even if by a certain uh, by a small centimeters, by or of, uh, in, even if they differ with a very small height. So there are so many intermediates from the tallest person to the shortest person. The same case applies to the skin color. In the skin color, we'll find some people who are very brown, others uh, chocolate, others like that, until you get to the darkest person. So there are so many intermediates that you'll get. So basically, we are saying that height and skin color are, uh, they are continuous variations with very many intermediates, very many in between. From the tallest person to the shortest person, there are so many other in between uh, uh, categories. So we are saying that, e.g., height in humans skin color Body weight or body mass, it's difficult to have a people who have the same mass up to the accuracy of a gram. Uh, so we are, we are saying that there are so many intermediates as far as those characteristics are concerned. And the reason why is because continuous variations are determined by many genes. So we can say that continuous variations are determined by many genes. So not like the discontinuous, which had just a few genes. They are determined by many genes and are also influenced by the environment. They are also influenced by the environment. Uh, just to give an example, <coughs> uh, a plant may have some certain genes for tallness. But unless that plant or the seed of that plant is planted in an area where the soil is fertile, where the nutrients are there, then that plant will not grow to its maximum height. If you put it in a place where the nutrients are deficient, 
then that uh, particular plant may become stunted in as much as it has the genes. So we are saying that uh, the continuous variations are also influenced by the environment. So we can say that e.g. a plant with genes for tallness may fail to grow tall because it is planted in an area that is deficient of nutrients. Nutrients, water, etc. So if the environment is not suitable, then that plant will not grow tall. We'll also find that uh, we have some people uh, whose skin tend to be dark simply because they have been exposed to very hot environments, especially in the tropics. So that tells you that uh, um, that heat may affect the, the skin color. <clears throat> so we are going to have an assignment on that. So the assignment, uh, the first question, uh, distinguish between continuous and discontinuous variations while giving an example of each or while giving examples of each. Number two, explain practical experiment that a learner can perform to show the two types of variations. And lastly three, what type of variation is represented by a normal distribution curve. A normal distribution curve is one that shows the uh, distribution at every stage, at lower level, at the middle level, and the, the high level. So we are going to stop there until next time. Goodbye.